Let's talk about current. For me, current is related to the transformation rate of the dielectric field. The dielectric field can transform into three things, according to me. Uh, the magnetic field, that we all know, uh, heat from resistance, and there's a third component, and I want to talk about that one. It's the longitudinal radiant energy. This is about fields. Fields that can transform into other fields. When a dielectric field is transformed, it can transform into the magnetic field or into heat. From resistance it will turn into heat and from an inductor, a coil, it will turn into a magnetic field. So current indicates the rate of transformation of the dielectric field into the magnetic field energy or into heat. The magnetic field I see as a vortex and this vortex in my definition needs time to build up. It is not instant because it's like a ether vortex. You've got the ether surroundings and it starts rotating, it starts making a vortex and that's the magnetic field, this vortex of energy. So when a dielectric field transforms into a magnetic field, then that dielectric field takes time to churn up the ethers to make this vortex, to make it spin. Just think of a water vortex. It's not instantly there when you pull the drain from your bathtub. It needs time to start rotating and when it's there it's powerful, but it takes time. The dielectric field is able to change voltage rapidly, much more rapid than a magnetic field can form. A dielectric field can change voltage very rapid due to the effect of the uh, step recovery diode. And I'll talk about that in another video. What, what this means is that you can take a dielectric field and make it pulse really rapidly. And this pulse is so fast that the magnetic field isn't able to start spinning. There's not enough time for it, so it gets, it gets a massive pulse of energy of the dielectric field and at the same time the magnetic field is absent because there is no time to build up. And there's also no heat because the res resistance is so very low. But still, the dielectric field energy is dissipated. It is transformed into something. And this something should be the radiant energy. It is pulsing the eaters. So the dielectric field that rapidly changes uh, puts a pressure on the ether and instead of making it twist like a vortex, the slow magnetic vortex, it will be pushed longitudinal. The ether starts moving longitudinal and with each push the longitudinal pressure builds up and it starts moving longitudinal. Think of this as a, a car tire that is very rapidly expanding by giving it air inside. And, and it's not the perfect example, but the rapid expansion in each direction creates a pressure wave. And this is what I'm talking about. The, the spike I'm after and that I have found is expanding the 
ethers and therefore it puts in a longitudinal motion that is known as the radiant energy. So in conclusion, a dielectric pulse, a rapid change in voltage in a coil is able to produce a longitudinal pressure wave known as radiant energy. It does this because there is no time to build up a magnetic vortex. There is no time to churn up the ethers. So the magnetic component stays zero. And at the same time the energy of the dielectric uh, change of voltage is uh, transformed into the longitudinal um, pressure wave of the ether. Beautiful, isn't it? I think what I just shared with you is a perspective that opens up many possibilities that need to be explored and that have the potential of uh, new technologies, radiant energy technologies. Again, thank you for watching.